All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Today we'll continue our discussion and the topic today is the interferons. There is a small study that came out of UK where a uh, 100 patients were, you, were enrolled in a study for the use of interferon for COVID-19 and the results were promising. So I wanted to make sure that number one, we look at that study, we look at the strengths and the weaknesses of that study and number Two, we look at the function of interferons and how can they actually help either in the case of COVID-19 or for the other viral infections as well. Interferons have been used for other viral infections for a long time as well. So let's see. So the first of all, looking at the study here, this is the science media center and this is the date is july 20th and over here if you see here expert reaction to announcement of the synergen that their drug sng001 has had positive results in the initial trials on covid19 patients and what is interesting to see here so let's look at the strength and weakness and what that study is they say that in their own uh, assessment the most important result appears to be a reduction in the number of patients requiring ventilation. That is what their, their feeling is that the most important result is. The study is this way. Here is the study. So in this study, what they did was there were 100 patients that were taken for the study. They were all hospitalized with COVID-19. And the about half of them were separated in a treatment group the remaining half were in the placebo group. But here is an important thing to note. And so if I go back to my graphics for a second, here are the 100 patients. Here are the 100 patients, half of them in the treatment group, other half in the placebo group. However, the comorbidities, the important comorbidities were more in the placebo group. So the group that was not receiving the medicine had more comorbidities. For example, diabetes was three times higher in the placebo group compared to the treatment group. Similarly, the CVS issue, cardiovascular issues, were more. 16% patient had the cardiovascular issues in placebo versus 10% patients having the cardiovascular issues in the control. So with this, Let's just look at those numbers quickly over here. So if you see here, uh, baseline features of each arm demonstrated that the proportion of patients with diabetes was three times higher in the placebo arm. So nine patients were diabetic out of 50 in the placebo, whereas three patients were diabetic out of 48 in the treatment group. Similarly, for the cardiovascular, in the placebo, there were eight patients out of 50 that had the cardiovascular issue versus five patients out of 48 that had the uh, that were in the treatment group. So definitely the comorbidities were more on the placebo side. So here they say it in this article that this difference could have been the reason for the outcome. Let's look at the outcome first. The outcome was that there were total three patients who died and all of them who died were in the placebo group. So now the question is, did they die because they were not receiving the medicine or did they die because their comorbidities were more? Secondly, there was 79% reduction in death or ventilation need in the treatment group. So that is the basic outcome of the study. If the group were balanced and if the number was large, then this number is a huge improvement. However, because the data is not published yet for review, the groups are already imbalanced, this number may not be yet very, very important. So I've seen some of the uh, folks on YouTube saying that, hey, this is a very important and bigger outcome. I don't think until we see the data, number one, and number two, until we see a larger study with the balanced uh, placebo versus treatment group to see the results. So with this, let's start our uh, discussion of the interferons. 
So interferons are they are released by virally infected cells. So those cells in our body that get infected, they start releasing interferons. That is one. Secondly, interferons, they're named <laughs> interferons because they interfere with the virus replication. These are naturally occurring cytokines or the chemical substances that are released by one cell that go to another cell and give a message. So these are called cyto cytokines. These specific cytokines are called interferons because they interfere with the virus replication. And we're going to look at this at how do they interfere with the virus replication. They also activate macrophages and the natural killer cells. And we know that the macrophages and natural killer cells are the part of the innate arm of the immune system. So their activation is actually a good thing. They also increase the antigen presentation. So if a cell is virally infected, we have done this discussion before that the cell would pick up the parts of the virus and then present them on its surface. So these are the antigen presentations. All nucleated cell can present pieces of the virus on its surface, virus or bacteria or fungus or any other antigen on its surface on MHC1 um, molecule. And all antigen, professional antigen presenting cells, which are dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells, they can present the pieces of the virus on their surface using MHC2 molecule. So interferons actually induce the cells. They enable them to present the virus more on their surfaces. And that way, they would the, the cell would be able to enable the immune system to work better. Similarly, finally, this is an important thing. Remember, in the cold-like situation, we have fever, muscle pains, flu-like symptoms. These are actually caused by interferons. So I should have spelled R correctly. So the, these things are also um, done by the interferons. Interferons, in turn, have various types. So there is type 1 interferons, type 2 interferon, and type 3. Type 1 are more important for today's discussion. Type 1 are further divided into multiple classes. For example, interferon gamma, interferon beta, that is the one we are talking about, kappa, epsilon, and I believe this is omega. So the interferon beta is what we are talking about today. Let's look at how they are produced in our body. When will the interferon be produced and where will they be produced? So first of all, all the cells that are virally infected can release interferon. And they do that because what they're trying to do is they're sending a message to the nearby cells to say, hey, guys, be alert. I have a virus in me. And that virus is going to come in you as well very soon as it would come out of myself. So they are kind of giving an alert to the nearby cells. And the nearby cells have an opportunity to up their defenses, to start defending themselves better. And that way, they can kind of contain the virus in that local area. So what are the cells that normally produce interferons? So if you see here, fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are the cells that are present in our connective tissue. Connective tissue are, is the tissue that is present between the functioning cells of our body. Connective tissue has a lot of collagen and fibrin and other cells. The, the cells that produce collagen and fibrin, these cells are called fibroblasts. They create fibers. And the fibroblast cells can produce interferon when they are infected. Similarly, monocytes, we talked about monocyte yesterday as well. Monocytes are the cells that are present in the blood. They come out of the bone marrow. Then the monocyte can actually go into the tissues and become resident over there. And once they are resident, they are called macrophages or dendritic cell. So monocytes can produce interferons. Macrophages, which are the first line of defense, macrophages and dendritic cell are part of the innate immune system. And when they connect with the virus, when their tall like receptor becomes stimulated or their pattern recognition receptor becomes stimulated, that stimulation causes the cell, the macrophage or dendritic cell, to produce interferon. 
on the other hand t helper 2 remember we have talked about t helper 2 a lot t helper 2 produce interleukin 4 5 and interleukin 10 the interleukin 10 produced by the t helper cells can actually block the production of interferon by other cells so this is about the production all cells can produce them especially fibroblasts monocytes macrophages dendritic cells but any ill virally ill cell will produce interferon to alert the cells around it to say hey guys wake up i have a virus it's going to come into you very soon so become better become strong have your defenses up now let's see what are the actions of the interferons this is a very cute thing and very interesting thing and interferons have been used for viral uh, infections for a long time so number one imagine that this is a cell that is virally infected so this cell has viruses in it the cell is now releasing interferons when the cell cell releases interferons then imagine there are many tons of cells that are around it so if i if i make them here they are like this so there are many many cells that are around it and now this cell that is virally infected is trying to tell them that hey guys become strong so let's say this is one of the cell that is present around this when the interferon connects with the interferon receptor on a nearby cell what happens is that there is a protein called pkr or protein kinase r that protein becomes activated so it's an inside the cell a protein becomes active that protein causes another protein called eif2 to become phosphorylated so it gives it money it says hey here is a phosphate for you and now this phosphorylated eif2 protein becomes disabled it has become rich it does not want to work anymore it's going to go home and sit down on a couch and watch tv so eif2 protein becomes ineffective or disabled or it doesn't work anymore and what is the function of eif2 you would really love this one look in our cell we have ribosomes and ribosomes that take rna and then they make proteins from them correct we have done these discussions in the past proteins are made by these little tailors which are called ribosomes when ribosomes are going to connect with it with a messenger rna that messenger rna may be the virus's rna or that messenger rna may be our rna whichever rna it is for connection there is another small protein called transfer rna initiation this rna is something that would catch the messenger rna from one from one end and bring it to the ribosome and connect it or insert it into the ribosome in the smaller part of it so you can say that the trna initiator helps initiate the formation of a protein from a messenger rna for this trna to work eif2 protein which i just talked about is necessary so that is kind of a helper protein and now when the interferons are present eif2 protein has become disabled it's not working anymore and when it is not working anymore then the ribosome cannot connect with the messenger rna to make a protein what is the outcome what do you think what is going to happen what's going to happen is that the ribosome inside the cell so if you see here this is a tiny ribosome sitting here the the ribosome inside the cell will reduce making proteins now these proteins may be virus proteins or these may be our proteins either way the cells that are surrounding an infected cell these surrounding cells have reduced the formation of proteins that would help them reduce the replication of virus if the virus enters these cells so that is one function of interferon to reduce and stall the spread of the virus second function <laughs> so this this is the cute monster i made today so here is a cell again let's say this is one of the surrounding cells on that cell surface interferon appeared and connected with the interferon receptor inside the cell and all of cells all of our cells have protein called rn rnas whenever there is a there is an as at the end of a protein name that means it is an enzyme that will break down something 
So RNAs means it will break down RNA. So this protein becomes activated by interferons. And what it does is it picks up the RNA that may be our own RNA or that may be viruses RNA. And it would just break it apart into pieces. So guess what would happen when the virus RNA cannot be replicated because it has been taken up by RNAs and broken down, then there is no more virus formation because the RNA or the genetic material to make the virus has been broken up. So this is another function of interferons. Continuing on, this is one more function of the interferon, and that is the P53. P53 is also called the guardian of a cell. P53 enzyme looks at a cell's DNA and looks at the genetic health of the cell, especially when the cells are dividing. So P53 are, of course, going to observe that the when the virus has entered a cell, the genetic material of the virus is now being active. The genetic material of the original cell, the host cell, our cell, is not working very well. So what interferons do is that they cause the P53 enzyme to become active. P53 enzyme, in turn, looks at the situation inside the cell and says, oh man, the genetic material is not going on good. And what it does is it causes the cell to commit a suicide, which is called apoptosis. So what it does is it tells the cell there are proteins called caspases. And I remember them by Casper, the friendly ghost. So there are proteins that are called caspases. The apoptosis process actually is that the caspases proteins are activated. Those proteins in turn go to various parts of the cell and make them stop functioning. When the cell components stop functioning, the cell dies. And this is called apoptosis. So interferons can cause apoptosis of the virally infected cell. This function is very similar to killing the virally infected cells by a natural killer cell or by the um, T helper cytotoxic cells. So interferon can cause a cell to kill itself if it is virally infected. Very interesting. And next function is the interferon when they connect with a the cell, they allow the cell to express more T major histocompatibility complexes. These are the complexes which are used to present the antigens. Remember then what happens is the T, T naive cell will come and connect here. This is a naive T cell. He doesn't know what is the purpose in his life. So he will come and connect here and then there will be co-stimulation and that co-stimulation is going to cause the T helper this cell, naive cell, to become Th2 or Th1, and the rest of the immune system works, correct? So for the naive cell to connect and function, we need the MHC proteins to present the antigen on these surfaces. And presence of interferon increases the presentation of the antigen on the cell. So cell can now present more antigens and can cause more T helper cells to become activated. So one is connected here. This is another helper cell. One is connected here. This is another helper cell. One is connected here and so on. So there are so many now helper cells are attached and the immune system can now go in a full cycle of working. So this is another function of the interferons. So with this, I'm going to show you a couple of more things and then we'll stop. Here, um, this is the actual trial of the interferon. So this is that company's trial and the clinical trials. This is where they have discussed that we are working on the interferon. They wanted 400 participants. They have 100. They have released that. They have released the article or news about it. They haven't yet released the data itself. Then here is the interferon. This is a study in vitro. That means it's not in a human body. It is in a petri dish. It is in the lab. So this is a study done in 2004. This was on SARS-CoV-1. So interferon beta 1A and SARS coronavirus replication. So what they did was in vitro, when the interferon were used on the SARS-CoV infected cells, 
then the cell replication had stopped. So here is that data. So it is not just the SARS-CoV-2. Interferons have been um, seen to cause slowdown of the viral replication, even in the SARS-CoV as well. And I would repeat, interferons have been used for hep hepatitis and many other viral infections as well. This is their behavior that they cause stalling and reduction in virus spread and virus replication. So this is about the interferons over here. I have these links in the description. And this is about the interferon type 1, which has interferon beta as part of it as well. So that is the discussion for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. How is everyone? So we'll take another three, four minutes for questions, and then we will break. Very, very good. So Sepal said that I had read about this week, this weeks ago. Glad that you're covering it. So thank you very much. Love the drawings. Thank you very much. Any questions? So Luffy, yeah, Luffy just woke up and he decided to mute. Any questions for the team? I have a couple of more doctors who are going to be here next week. So I think that would be exciting. You are very welcome. When is America going to provide rehab to long haulers? Many of us are deeply sad. Some have said they don't want to live anymore. So this is a very important issue, Shelley. And um, so far, of course, what I'm seeing is this. What I'm seeing is that the outpatient doctors, Dr. Zelenko, for example, doctors in the outpatient are actually doing much better than the hospitals, number one. Number two. For the long haulers, there are both issues. Number one, to fix the issue itself, the remnant of the disease. And number two, to provide the psychological support. And I'm not seeing that very much. I'm not actually seeing people very uh, attentive to it. I have my own way of helping long haulers. And thank God, till now, whoever I have helped, they have become OK. What I'll do is this. Maybe at some point, we can look at a discussion of all the possible steroid uses at various stages of this drug. I think it is worth discussing. But Shelly, you are correct. And I'm very um, I'm sad as well that this, this particular segment of the patients is not taken good care of yet. So Ben is saying that long callers should look for other viruses that may be resurfacing. That is true. Um, so there's a question about the colchicine in SARS-1. I say it, I have not yet seen that. So I would do some research and see what is in there. So there is a question that is interesting by Daniel. When interferon is sprinkled on a naive T cell, what determines which IL is used? So look, interferon, as far as I know, does not have an effect on a naive T cells conversion towards help T helper 2 or T helper 1. There are two primary um, interleukins, that is interleukin 4 and interleukin 12, that decide which arm is taken. Interferon gamma is released by the T helper 1 cell and cytotoxic T cells, which would then amplify natural killer cells and the macrophages, and innate arm will be amplified. That is called interleukin 12 interferon gamma axis. So, so there's a question by Mark. Do you think that we will need a vaccine and there is a doctor from Dallas using inhaler? So yes, the Dr. Richard Bartlett has been using inhaler. I had done a discussion about his method as well. Although I did not use the word inhaler, I just drew it. And somehow people became very upset that I'm trying to hide that he uses in his, uh, nebulizer. He uses nebulizer, Richard Bartlett. He says that he has seen very good results. I, ha <clears throat> I have seen good results as well with steroids. But I am a little shy using steroids in the early part of the disease. They can become counterproductive. Although nebulizers would only go up to the lung, hopefully will not become systemic. And that is still protective. But yes, so the, the doctor is Richard Butler. I've talked about it, 
as well. I am actually trying to see if I can have him join us as well. Yes, so there is a question, uh, there is a comment, Williams Day, COVID turns off interferon. Many viruses try to turn off interferon so that the viruses can replicate. This is a strategy of replication. COVID does that too. So giving interferon from outside is actually useful. So William, very good comment. So I'm going to do another, uh, Saples, I'm going to do another discussion of the vaccines, especially with the Pfizer's vaccine as well. I think America has given them a lot of money as well to produce the vaccine. So we'll see where they are at. So this uh, question, Ambal, on another channel, I had heard that long haulers being deactivated other virus infections. It is possible. Look, when somebody is a long hauler, what is happening in them is that the virus is lingering in them. That means their immune system is somehow not able to handle the virus or the virus is causing a different arm of the immune system to become activated. So in such patients, if there is an immune modulation problem, then it is possible that other viruses will surface as well the immune system is already dysregulated so it is possible so please check facebook inbox i've sent new te testing data i'll look at that i'll look at that i have a psychiatric doc friend at, at ucsc who is aware of and treating it believe it's mast cell stuck in high gear still degranulating look up mast cell activation syndrome Absolutely. And I think more than the mast cell, it is a macrophage activation syndrome that is important. Uh, Margaret says, wonderful job teaching functions of various types of cells and the more extensive actions of the URA rock stars in so many people. Hearts, thank you for everything. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for staying um, up to date. My thinking is, so I'm just going to give this comment and then we stop. My thinking is that all these exotic medicines, uh, interferons or um, glironlimab or tocilizumab or lenzilumab or fevipiravir. I think that in majority of the cases, again, this is not a prescription for anyone. Um, steroids have done a better job. I know that immune modulation by focused area is interesting. For example, IL-6 blockade or CCL5 disruption or tumor necrosis factor blockade. However, what I'm seeing is my observation is that in majority of the patients, simple steroid use has been very useful. I am still very, very hesitant to use steroids early on because that has a potential to spread the disease faster. But I'm seeing many doctors who very early start using steroids as well. So once again, I'm saying it with a lot of caution, this incorrect use of steroid can actually cause issues. So please don't take it as, an, as a prescription, don't take it as an advice, but this is the observation that I have. Talk with your doctor and you and doctor should make the right decision. I think if some, something needs to be kept at hand, these are going to be ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, supplements, zinc, and steroids. I think everything else is actually companies trying to bring their drug forward as well to say this works too. And that is fine. It's a good thing. But there is a more simpler approach to this whole management. Absolutely. So Ken says, I agree, but timely doses. The bulk, so there is a geo goal MOOC. The bulk of viral replication occurs before hospitalization, something a long time before. And that is why it is important that when the, um, when the virus is replicating, we start supporting the patient at that time correctly with medicine, instead of saying, just stay indoors and just keep taking Tylenol or something like that, and you'll be okay. I think that is the time to actually do something better than that. Chantel says that with the situation here in Australia, the moment at the moment, especially here in Victoria, I hope they come up with a vaccine soon as the virus outbreaks are really bad now that we have the second wave in Victoria and Melbourne is locked down. I understand, I hope so too. So as an exercise, I'll give you an idea. Uh, look up Pakistan's management. I am actually surprised. 
in Pakistan, Pakistan is two third the population of the US with much less resources. And I was surprised that very there was a wave in Pakistan. And then I saw that very quickly, the wave has disappeared. <coughs> Excuse me. So I started calling my friends and I started asking them that what is going on? And their treatment protocols are much simpler than many of the protocols we are seeing. And they are able to, in outpatient, in general practice, the general practitioners are able to manage the patients much better than the hospitals because they're taking them early on and they're treating them early on. So that is a way I <laughs> sometimes I want to talk about what they're doing, but I'm afraid that that can go. Um, that can be something that if um, it is risky as well, but it is very interesting that they have uh, taken care of almost control of the virus. So just look at how they are managing their government uh, prescribed protocol is different and or government approved protocol is different and what G general practitioners are doing in wherever they're sitting is very different i say to my friends that they have learned how to handle this virus without having the patient end up in a hospital so the there is a question from morris in britain they are doing trials with interferon treatment in inhalers. Correct. So this discussion that I just did, this is inhaled interferon. Yes, you are very correct. That is not just a Pakistan. Many countries have done very good. And I'm seeing that there are two ways to do good. One is the social distancing, masks, and washing hands, and so on. And the second way is to have the management by the doctors as well. So I think I was actually worried about Pakistan. People were not taking care of the masks and the social distancing, but they still found out ways to manage this virus without a lot of death toll. That is very interesting for me. So there's a question. Can we explore further the nucleus stat one that gets disrupted by coronavirus? Ivermectin looks like a very exciting broad spectrum. Absolutely. So we can talk about it. Ivermectin has been. I, I talked Ivermectin about three months ago. It is a beautiful drug. I love it. What are the frontline physicians Pakistan doing differently? So that is what I'm. I'm a little hesitant to describe that here. Um, ivermectin, doxycycline, azithromycin, and steroid combinations are being used, and I am surprised for the. They don't use hydroxy. They they have this political feeling that hydroxy is somehow not right. So hydroxy is not very much used, uh, but ivermectin is used, doxy is used, steroids are used, and patients are avoiding uh, hospitals. Once again, this is not a prescription for every single person. These are the doctors who are looking at the patient, look in condition of the patient, comorbidities, then deciding how to give the medicine, then observing the patient and following up. So please don't take these as a prescription. It can hurt. That is correct. All right, guys. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for learning together. And let us uh, continue our discussion tomorrow. I think there has to be some way that I can disclose fully how they are managing without putting, uh, without creating liability. Uh, because what they're doing, they have really prevented death and they have reduced. Can I, can you imagine this 220 million people not caring much for masks and social distancing and those things? Eid came about a couple of months ago and they were all going in crowds and doing things that was scaring WHO. The next Eid is coming in. Uh, Eid is the religious holiday. Next Eid, Eid is coming in another three, six, seven days. Even then, my colleagues who are my class fellows who are now heading various departments over there, when I ask them about the condition in the ICU, ICUs are empty. When I ask them for the patients in the hospitals, hospitals are empty. The corona wards, my, many of my friends have their own hospitals and their corona units are closed. They're saying we don't have the corona unit anymore. We, no, there is no patient in there. 
So what happened with 220 million, America is 330 million, right? So about two third of the population, they are less careful, re less rich, less resourceful. How did they manage to not have so many deaths and misery? That is a very interesting thing to look at. So thank you very much for today. And we will continue our discussions tomorrow. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and we will meet again. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.